Hi everyone, today we're going to make stemless roses without using a stem and without using a cutting machine. We're going to do it by hand. Stemless flowers are ideal for shadow boxes and 3D shapes, picture frames. You can place uh, roses or your flowers, whatever shape you do, uh, on your project without having a stem poking out and it's ideal. Um, this is a 3D box lever that I did on a previous video that you can see and uh, it's just ideal having a stemless flower on there. You can do stems using a toothpick or a barbecue skewer and hold it in place and glue it within the stem and then after uh, grab yourself a green sheet of paper and just um, tightly wrap that around your stem after you've finished when your flower is on and you can get your ideal um, height length whatever stem you want now this would be a lot more firmer if I did this flat on the table but just to give you an idea you would tighten that out glue it as you tighten it and you'd have a nice thin stem and you can cut it to whatever desire you want if you can just imagine your flower was there but we won't be using a stem we're just going to be using this barbecue skewer as a guide um, paper that I'm using is 80 GSM you can get these shapes circular and square shapes from office work of multiple colors 80 GSM is great for um, the able to fold and cut and roll the thicker you go the harder it will be to roll your flowers you don't necessarily have to use a square or a circle sheet of paper and I'll show you why in a few minutes but these are nice ideal cut sizes you can go smaller uh, depending on how tight or small you want the flower to be but I like using these because they're already pre-made cut. You can use leftover scraps from previous objects, uh, jobs that you've done, like projects you've made. So you don't necessarily have to have pre-made cut sheets. You can cut your own as you go. So what you need is a barbecue skewer or a toothpick, um, whatever it may be, or even a paper quill pen. You can get different various size paper quill pens. Um, also, I'm using my husband's guitar pick as a shape guide to show you um, tacky purpose all glue, like all purpose glue, and a scraping tool and your scissors. So we'll get stuck into it. Basically, just um, start off by grabbing either your circle or square shape. We'll start with the uh, circle and you fold that in half once. You just marry it up nicely over the top. So you've got one fold like that and uh, use your scraping tool to get a nice firm crease in your fold and then fold it again in half and then once again scrape it down flat to give it a nice firm crease and then fold it again for a third time this time making sure that you have your point and your paper all lined up correctly and give it another fold and crease so I'll just show you that again by unfolding this on how many folds that we've done. So you have your circular shape, you fold it in half once, fold it in half twice and then fold it again for a third time. And you do that with your square as well. So I'll quickly just show you that on your square. So you fold it into a triangle and then just give it a nice firm crease scrape with your scraping tool, fold it again marrying up the edges and the point so they're not quite overlapping try, it doesn't matter if you overlap just a fraction but um, just try to get it precisely over the top and once again as you can see fold it again for your third and then give it a scrape just to fold that crease down nicely and I'll just show you that again with your square shape so you have a square you fold it over once you fold it over twice and then you fold it over for a third time and we'll do that for the next following 
three sheets of each shape. You need four of these in total. Okay, so now you've got all four pieces of each shape, regardless if it's the circular or the square shape. It really doesn't matter because you're going to be cutting some excess away. So we have all our four pieces. Um, we're now going to start off with a circle one just to show you on this. And you can see the shape is very similar to a guitar pick. But we also uh, need to cut this down because I don't want really large flowers. And we also need to do a petal shape. And a trick that I use is I stick the insert into the fold of my thumb. And I use my thumb as a guide and cut around and um, do a nice circle shape. And we'll just fine tune that a little bit. So you get a nice sort of like circle and uh, triangle point, which like I mentioned, looks like a guitar pick. You could probably use that as a shape, but it's not quite as round, but I just wanted to show you that you can use things like a coin um, as a guide or a guitar pick, but we won't be using that. I'll be using my other ones as a guide and keeping them very similar in shape. You don't have to be 100% perfect in your shape. You can make it a fraction smaller, fraction, fraction bigger. It doesn't really um, affect the pedal. Uh, no rose is identical. All roses are unique and different. So we're going to make ours unique and different, each and single one of them. But they all look like a rose, so we'll just shape that up a bit. And do the next one. So don't feel that you have to be exact. They're not all identical shapes of um, cut or length. Some of them are a little bit fraction longer. Some of them aren't quite as round as you can see. So that's fine. And we'll do the same for our square shape. But this time you have to make sure that you do get your centre fold. Not like the round one was easy. The centre fold was pretty much in the middle and the rounds open pages were at the top um, in one section where you've got several folds here. So just make sure your open part of the paper is exposed at the top. Once again, use your thumb as a guide or a coin or a guitar pick, whatever you choose to use. And just uh, cut that around nicely. I might just shape that a bit more. And then use your following ones, making sure your paper is at the top again. And just cutting around. Grabbing your third sheet. So it doesn't have to be perfect can't always have the same looking rows. And on the last one. Okay. So now we've got four of each petals. I'm just going to discard this space here to the side. Clean up our desk a bit. And now we have our four pieces of our square and our four pieces of our circle. And I'm going to open it up and show you that we've formed a love heart, as you can see. And we are now going to open it up further into a flower with our folds. We've got our slices, like our pizza slices. And we're going to do this for all of these three following pieces open them up and we'll do the same for the squares as well in a minute but we'll just uh, open these up and I'll show you what our next step is we might leave the squares to a later part in the video but we've got our three four flower sections so now what we need to do is cut our petals out to form a bud and we only need on one sheet is one slither of 
petals. Does that have to be straight? You can cut it wonky, it doesn't really matter. It's irrelevant, it's not going to be seen. But we've got our one piece and the rest of the flowers. And we're going to do the next one as two petals. So our second sheet will be two petals. Cut on the crease to remove the petals. This one's a heart shape, so that's our second one. Our third one, we're going to cut three petals out. So third sheet, third petals. And then our fourth one should be four on each side. So we're gonna cut straight down the middle. And there's our fourth sheet. So we've now cut them into what we need them to do. And we're going to start with our single petal. This will be our center um, bud piece. I've got a little bit sticking out because I didn't cut it right on the crease. That's okay, you can just cut that out. And we're going to use the skewer and just firmly press it down a roller and twist it to form an opening of a bud. As you can see, what I've done here. And we're going to just get some of our all-purpose non tacky glue, sorry, not non tacky glue, tacky glue. And we're just going to put a little bit of glue there. Not much, it's not really needed. And um, we're going to spin it around, hold it there, squeeze it into a circular shape so you form the bud and hold it there for a few minutes. And then we're going to grab our second set of petals and we're just going to go a little bit higher. So there's the base of the twirl and we're just going to go a little bit higher and look at the top of the bud and you just want to go sort of in the middle of the V height not too high you can probably drop it down a little bit lower and we're just gonna pinch that in there with our finger at the base and we're just gonna put some glue on either side and just sort of spin that around hold it in place and then fold it over itself and spin it down you can do it firmly you could do it loosely depending on how open you want the center bud I'm doing it sort of in between. I'm just going to hold that there, pinching the base and twisting it because we're using these center buds piece as the stem. And we're just using the skewer as a guide. You can stick it to the skewer and, um, like I said, wrap it around with green paper and use it as a stem later if you wanted to. But we're doing stemless, so we're not sticking it to the wood. So we're just holding it there as a guide. Then your third petals, we're going to put some glue on that. And we'll do one side first. And just like before, put it in the seam and just get your height. I mean, if you want to go a little bit higher, you can, but I'm just going to spin that around and use that tab to hold it down. I'm going to put a bit more on that side so it sticks down on top of itself a bit more. And I can now, because I'm feeling more confident that my shape is forming, remove the stem and pull that out because I no longer need it. So I can hold that a little bit better and pinch it down because we're doing stemless and we want to sort of like point it down, pinch it, twist it even if you wanted to. And we're starting to get our center bud piece. So now we grab the uh, fourth piece, which is the four petals. And we're just going to be a bit more generous with the glue here. Just put some down there and around the middle and along the sides just to give it a bit more sticking bonding sections and we're going to come a little bit higher because we want to give the flower some shape now to turn it into a rose so this is still our center bud but we um can use our fingers and roll it out a little bit, just a couple of the petals, just to give it a bit more 3D depth. Or we can use a quill, um, paper quill pen, just to give it a bit more 
depth. Um, I'm going to go too crazy in there. This one's going to be a bigger centerpiece. And then we get our another, well, now we're working backwards. So we went one, two, three, four. Now we're going four, three, two, one. So you grab your fourth piece with all four petals. And I'm just going to give myself a bit more bonding section with the glue. And I'm going to um, pull this up a little bit higher. As you can see, I've got that much space there and I'm going to firmly press that down and then spin it around on top of itself and hold that down for a few minutes, shaping it so I don't squeeze my flower, just sort of shape it roundly. And I'm going to use my quill just to give the petals a bit more of a 3D dimension to that. Or like I said, you can use your nails or fingers to squeeze it. And we're just going to pinch the base and twist it a little bit, just so we get that stem happening there for our next pieces. So now we're going to grab the third one that was cut out the three petal pieces. And I'm actually going to roll this one first before I put it down with the rest of the petals, the flower, just so I can get a bit more depth on that. And then put some generous amount of glue in the middle because we want to stick that down in there and have it stick nicely. You can find where the previous fold was which I can't really see where it is. I did, there we go, right there. And we're going to raise this a little bit higher so we can get our flower depth and stick that down and then tightly, tightly spin it around and squish it on top of itself. I might just put a bit more glue here so I've got some more to, um, to hold down on. And there we are, we're having our rose formed nicely. And I'm just firmly twisting it as I'm holding down the glue and I'm twisting the base and squeezing a little bit to make it circular and also to pinch down so I've got my stem base to stick on. So now we're back down to the two petals that were cut out. Um, ideally, if you're using the um, toothpick or barbecue skewer, if you were using this as your stem, you would overlap one of the petals over the top of the other petal and you would cut the base out um, by just cutting, I can do this now, but you just cut the triangle base off so you've got a hole point there for your skewer. Um, it just helps when you're laying it around because you've, you've got more width on the skewer than you do a stemless one as you can see. But you can also do it on this one. It, will help a little bit because we're raising the petals up as we're going along. Um, let's curl these out a bit more using our tools, whatever it may be, like I said, toothpick, barbecue skewer or paper quill. And we'll put a generous amount of glue at the start and then around the base of it. And we'll wait till we get to the edge because I'm not sure where I'm going to fold that one. But we're going to bring that up about there, a bit higher. Stick that one down. And then tightly pull that and spin it around. Now I'm just going to put some generous amount of glue there as well. Uh, maybe just a bit more on that side. Okay. And then pinch it down, holding it. As you're forming the rose, just give it a bit of a squeeze, pinching that down on the base. Okay, and then our last piece, I might just cut the base again because I'm going to come up a little bit higher with this one. So, as before, overlap one slither over the top of the other, slice one piece so you've got like an open flower, cut the base just so we got some room to move that down and we'll put a generous amount of glue at the start and around the base and we 
going to hold that about there and it's fairly as you can see there's the base of it there so we're fairly high up the flower now and then I'm tightly pulling this around I'm now going to put some glue there I'll just put a bit don't want to go too high because then we're exposing the glue we only just want to glue the base and we'll firmly squeeze that down and twist the base so we can use that as a surface to stick down on a shadow box or a shape and there you have it we've got a nice red rose um, you can go through finally spin them out a bit more but as you can see we've made a handmade rose without using a machine and you know this is where you, you would get your surface of where you're sticking it flatten it down and glue in that aspect like that um, whichever way you wanted to do it you could glue it down like that and have that nice and flush so you don't see the stem and you've got a surface to stick down as such and there you have it i hope that was helpful and um, you enjoyed the video if you did please click like and subscribe and stay tuned for further videos thank you bye